All right, so on this problem we were given the probability density function to be this absolute value function here, yeah? And I wanted you to find the mode E of x squared and I also wanted you to graph what it looked like. So, here is some theory about how we're going to do the E of x squared bit. But to start off with, I'm going to graph the function. So, if we just consider the linear function without the absolute value, that's given by this bit here. So if I just sketch that bit, this is the actual function in here. But we know that we only want it between 0 and 8 because that's what was given in the problem. So we don't want anything down here or above 8. So this graph would be just this section in here. And then we'd flip it from 4 to 8 and we get that bit there. So what I've got there in the solid black line is the graph of the absolute value function. And I know that because the y-intercepts are chord and the gradient's negative 1 and 16th. I can use let x equal 0 to find the y-intercept, let y equal 0 to find the x-intercept. And I find that to be 4. Now if we're asked to find the mode of this, we need to find the x value for which f of x is the greatest. And even though I haven't drawn this symmetrical, f of x equal to a quarter is the greatest value and that occurs at two points, 0 and 8. So we would say we've, the mode is 0 and 8 and it's, so it's bimodal if we're referring back to what we did in statistics in early years, yeah? We've got two modes, that's bimodal. Alright, so let's go and calculate e of x squared. Now the general rule you use for any of these e of g of x problems is this one. e of g of x is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of g of x f of x dx. Now we want x squared, so that's why we write x squared here. So our g of x is x squared. And we don't need to go outside of 0 and 8 because it's 0 everywhere else. So we've only really got the integral from 0 to 8 x squared f of x dx. All right, so let's start doing that. Now, the integral from 0 to 8 of x squared f of x is the same as the integral from 0 to 4 x squared of this part, which is given by that section of the absolute value function, plus from 4 to 8 of the negative of this, which is this. So we're breaking up the integral from 0 to 8 into two parts because it's easier to integrate them when we're not using the absolute value function. Yeah? So then it's just an, a basic integration problem. So I've expanded this bracket out and I get negative 116x cubed plus x squared over 4 by multiplying these out. Do the same thing here, and I get x squared, x cubed over 16 minus x squared over 4, 4 to 8. Yeah, but we don't want to do that because that involves integrating an absolute value function. So if we think about it graphically, we can just break it up into two parts. And even though I haven't drawn this symmetrical, mm -hmm. what you'd find is that each one of these equals 12. No, it doesn't. Does it? No, that was, the, that was the shortcut I was thinking about doing. The area under those are equal, but I don't know if the integral x squared f of x is going to be the same. But anyway. That, oh yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Hey? So, I start integrating. The integral of negative 116x cubed is x to the power of 4 over 4 times negative 116, which is how I get this bit. 
x squared over 4 is the same as this bit. Can you see how I got that? Yeah? So then you should be able to see how I got that bit and that bit. And now I need to go and do this, these definite integral calculations by substituting in 4 first. So I'm putting x equal to 4 there and there. And then I go 0 and 0. And these just equal 0. And I do the 8 bit and the 4 bit there. Does anybody not follow that? No. Steve? Yeah. Not the other screen. So I'm substituting in the B value and then some subtracting what I, what I get when I substitute in the A value, yeah? And then 4 cubed is 4 to the power of 4. You said we should be able to do the calculator. Yeah. How could we get 4,096? Okay. Here? Okay. 8 to the power of 4 is just the same as 8 times 8 times 8 times 8, yeah? What's 8 times 8? And you have to expand it like that. Of... Yeah, well, how else are you going to do it? Oh, I'm just asking. Yeah. You could use um, no, index laws. Yeah, index laws. That's, that's all I'm using here is index laws. No, but you can make it 4 to the... Yes, that, that's all right. Or 2 to the... And then add yeah. them that way. 8 is the same as 2 cubed. So that'd be 2 to the power of 12, yeah? Mm -hmm. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. But I'm, I'm doing it this way. Now, if you're having problems multiplying those out, just go back again to primary school. 4 times 4 is 16. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1 is 24. Add the 0. 4 times... Uh, 24. 24. 36 plus 4. 38. 6, 9. What do I get? Zero. Alrighty? Yep. Yep. And then you'd have to do some long division again to simplify, say, from here. Oops. From there to there. So it's just a matter of combining our fractions now. And this should this would take a lot of you back a few years, I guess. But if you just take one fraction at a time. And take your time and make sure, yeah, 64 divided by 12 is going to be 5 and 4 twelfths, and 4 twelfths is 1 third. Then you should be able to get down to the answer here, which is 24. Yeah?